I've been driving trucks for nearly two decades, and in that time, I've seen my fair share of strange things on the road. But nothing compares to what happened one night at a lonely rest stop in the middle of Wyoming. It was late, maybe 2 or 3 a.m., and I was pushing through the last stretch of a long haul from Denver to Salt Lake City. The road was deserted, not a single car in sight, and I was starting to feel the weight of fatigue pulling at my eyelids. I knew I needed a break, so when I saw a sign for a rest stop a few miles ahead, I decided to pull in. The place was quiet, eerily so. There were no other vehicles, just a few flickering lights, and the outline of an old building that might have been a visitor center at some point. I parked the truck, stretched my legs, and made my way over to the restroom. As I approached, I noticed something strange. A car parked on the far side of the lot, almost hidden in the shadows. It was an old sedan, its paint chipped and faded, and it was sitting there with the engine off and the windows up. I couldn't see anyone inside, but something about it felt off. I shook off the feeling, chalking it up to exhaustion, and went into the restroom. The place was as run down as you'd expect, a flickering fluorescent light, cracked tiles, and the faint smell of mildew. I did my business quickly, eager to get back on the road. As I stepped outside, I noticed the car was still there, but now there was a man standing beside it. He was tall and thin, wearing a dark hoodie pulled up over his head. He wasn't moving, just standing there, facing my truck. I felt a chill run down my spine. Something about the way he was standing, so still, so focused on my truck, set off alarm bells in my head. I decided it was time to leave. I started walking back to the truck, keeping an eye on the guy, but he didn't move. He just kept staring. I climbed into the cab, locked the doors, and started the engine. As soon as the headlights came on, the man turned and started walking toward the building, disappearing into the shadows. I breathed a sigh of relief and put the truck in gear, but as I began to pull out of the rest stop, I caught a glimpse of something in the side mirror. Another figure, this one crouched behind the truck. My heart skipped a beat. I hadn't seen anyone else when I arrived. I quickly turned on all the exterior lights, flooding the area with light. The figure sprang up. A woman, dressed in dirty clothes, her face obscured by a mess of tangled hair. She looked right at me, her eyes wide with panic. Without thinking, I hit the gas and sped out of the rest stop, heart pounding in my chest. As I merged back onto the highway, I couldn't shake the feeling that I just narrowly avoided something terrible. For the next hour, I kept glancing in my mirrors, half expecting to see that old sedan or the woman's wild eyes staring back at me. But the road remained empty, and I eventually convinced myself it was just a couple of drifters, nothing more. Still, I didn't stop again until I reached Salt Lake City. Even now, whenever I pass a rest stop in the middle of nowhere, I can't help but feel a little uneasy, remembering that night and the strange figures lurking in the darkness. A few years ago, I was driving a late night haul through a dense forest in the Pacific Northwest. The road was narrow and winding, cutting through miles of thick trees with no signs of civilization in sight. It was the kind of road that gave you the creeps, especially at night when the darkness seemed to close in around you. It was well past midnight, and I hadn't seen another vehicle for hours. The only sound was the rumble of my truck's engine and the occasional rustling of leaves in the wind. I was focused on the road, trying to stay alert, when suddenly, something caught my eye up ahead. In the middle of the road stood a man, waving his arms frantically. I slammed on the brakes, bringing the truck to a screeching halt just a few feet from him. My heart pounded as I took in the scene. There was no car, no broken down vehicle, just this man standing alone in the middle of nowhere. He approached the truck, still waving, and motioned for me to roll down the window. As he got closer, I could see his clothes were dirty like he'd been out here for a while. He was out of breath, his face pale and his eyes wide with fear. Please, I need a ride. My car broke down a few miles back and I've been walking for hours, he said, his voice shaky. Something didn't feel right. How did he get here, on this empty road in the middle of the forest? I glanced around, but there was nothing. Just trees and darkness. My instincts screamed at me that something was off. 
I hesitated, my hand hovering over the door lock. The man was now right next to the window, his face inches from the glass. He smiled, but there was something unsettling about it, a hint of something dark behind his eyes. Just as I was about to unlock the door, a flash of movement caught my attention in the headlights. My blood ran cold as I saw another figure step out of the trees and onto the road, directly in front of the truck. This figure was holding something long and dark in one hand, and his face was hidden by the shadows. The man at my window turned to look at him, and then slowly turned back to me, his smile growing wider, more sinister. Every instinct screamed at me to get out of there. I slammed the truck into gear and floored the gas pedal. The truck lurched forward, the tires screeching as I sped down the road, swerving to avoid the figure standing in front of me. As I passed him, I saw his face, twisted in a grotesque grin, his eyes cold and lifeless. I didn't look back. My heart was pounding in my chest, and my hands were shaking on the wheel. I drove as fast as I could, desperate to put as much distance between me and whatever the hell that was. After a few minutes, I glanced in the side mirror, expecting to see the two figures behind me. But there was nothing. Just the dark road stretching out into the distance. I felt a slight wave of relief, thinking I'd managed to escape whatever was happening back there. But just as I started to relax, I noticed a light up ahead. Headlights, coming straight toward me in the middle of the road. My heart skipped a beat as the lights grew closer. Too fast, as if the vehicle was barreling down on me. I honked the horn, hoping to get the driver's attention, but the headlights didn't move. They were aimed directly at me, and I had no choice but to swerve onto the shoulder to avoid a collision. The car raced past me, but as I looked in the rearview mirror, there was nothing there. No car, no lights, just empty road. My heart was racing, and I struggled to keep my hands steady on the wheel. What the hell was going on? I pushed the truck to its limits driving as fast as I could, not daring to slow down. I kept checking the mirrors, expecting to see those headlights or the figures from the road, but the night remained eerily quiet. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I saw the lights of a small town up ahead. The sight of those lights was the most welcome thing I'd ever seen. I pulled into a well-lit truck stop on the edge of town, my heart still pounding in my chest. I parked the truck and sat there for a moment trying to catch my breath. My mind was racing, replaying the events of the last hour. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had narrowly escaped something terrible. I got out of the truck, my legs shaky, and walked into the truck stop's diner. The warm light and the smell of coffee were comforting, a stark contrast to the cold, dark forest I just left behind. I ordered a coffee and sat down, still trying to process what had happened. I don't know who those men were or what they wanted, but I'm certain of one thing. If I had opened that door, I wouldn't have made it out of that forest alive. Even now, whenever I drive through a forest at night, I can't help but feel a shiver down my spine, remembering that creepy smile and those cold, lifeless eyes. It was a delivery job that took me deep into the mountains of West Virginia, far from the main highways. The route was tricky, winding through dense forests and up steep, narrow roads. The destination was a small cabin, isolated and tucked away from civilization. I wasn't thrilled about it, but the money was good, so I took the job. The drive started off fine, but as I climbed higher into the mountains, the roads became rougher, barely more than dirt paths in some places. The trees closed in on either side, and the darkness seemed thicker, almost suffocating. My GPS signal cut out hours ago, and I was navigating by memory and a poorly drawn map provided by the client. By the time I reached the cabin, it was well past midnight. The place was as remote as it gets. No signs of life, no lights, just a small wooden structure surrounded by thick woods. I parked the truck and got out, the silence pressing in on me like a weight. The cabin door was open, swinging slightly in the breeze. I called out, but there was no answer. I approached cautiously, every instinct telling me to be on guard. Inside, the cabin was a mess. Furniture overturned, papers scattered everywhere, and the faint smell of something rotten. I was about to turn around and leave when I heard it. A faint creaking sound, 
like footsteps on old wood. It was coming from the back of the cabin. I froze, listening, but the sound stopped. My heart raced as I realized I wasn't alone. I quickly made my way back to the truck, but just as I reached the door, I heard the creak again, this time closer. I turned and saw a shadowy figure standing in the doorway of the cabin, watching me. I didn't wait to see who it was. I jumped into the cab, started the engine, and tore down the narrow road, the truck bouncing and skidding on the uneven ground. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what I'd seen, but nothing about it felt right. As I sped down the mountain, the road ahead began to blur, fatigue and fear mixing into a dangerous cocktail. I knew I had to find a place to stop, but the cabin was miles behind me, and there was no sign of another building or even a clearing where I could pull over. Then, out of nowhere, my headlights caught the reflection of something on the side of the road. A small sign pointing down a barely visible path. I slammed on the brakes and backed up, squinting to read the sign. It simply said, Motel. Desperate for a break, I turned down the path, hoping it would lead to some semblance of civilization. After a few minutes of driving, I saw it. A rundown motel, its neon sign flickering in the darkness. It looked abandoned, but I was too exhausted to care. I pulled into the empty parking lot and got out, my legs shaky from the drive. The motel was silent, no lights in the windows, no signs of life. I walked up to the office, hoping to find someone inside, but the door was locked. A small bell on the counter inside was the only indication anyone had been there recently. I decided to check the rooms, thinking maybe I could crash for a few hours and leave some cash under the door as payment. But as I walked down the row of doors, I noticed something strange. They were all slightly ajar. I hesitated, then pushed one of the doors open. The room inside was dark, musty, but otherwise normal. I moved to the next door, pushing it open with the same result. It wasn't until I reached the third room that I saw something that made my blood run cold. There, on the bed, was a set of footprints. Muddy, like someone had walked across it and then vanished. I backed away, suddenly aware of how alone I was, how far from help. I turned to leave, but before I could take a step, I heard a door creak open behind me. I spun around, but the hallway was empty, the door still slightly ajar. My breath caught in my throat, and I felt a presence behind me, something watching, waiting. I ran. I sprinted back to the truck, jumped inside, and slammed the door shut, locking it behind me. My hands shook as I started the engine, and I floored it out of that parking lot, not daring to look back. I drove straight through the night, not stopping until I was miles away, back on the main highway. I never delivered the package. I didn't care. All I knew was that whatever was up there in those mountains, I wanted no part of it. Even now, I can't shake the feeling that something followed me out of those woods. Something that's still out there, waiting.